Gunsmoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Take the day off tomorrow, Matt. See if we can shoot us a deer. Oh, that's not a bad idea, Doc. Looks like we might get a light snow tonight. Make it easier to track them. You couldn't track a three-legged buffalo in a box, can you? Oh, is that so? Let me ask you, who tracked that antelope we shot just before Christmas? It wasn't an antelope. It was a deer. Yeah, well, that's not the point. And you didn't track it. Chester did. Uh, Hey, you want to stop in the office for a while? Yeah, I'm right, I do. Matt, I recollect that antelope just like it was yesterday. Dear, Doc. Good uh, morning, Chester. Oh, dear. Yeah, that fellow's back there. We can see you, Mr. Dillon. Oh, uh-huh. good. Morning, Marshal. Hello, Burke. I thought you were back in Washington. I was. Come in on a train last night. Got a job for you, Marshal. Is that so? Yeah, that goes out. What's he saying? You know, Doc, don't you, Burke? Yeah, we've met. Yeah, sure we've met. I've been warning him for years about that blasted temper. Just mind your own business. Hey, look at him right now. You see veins swelling up in his neck, face getting red as a beast. So help me, Doc Adam. Keep, right? keep on like that, Burke Crager. One of these days I'll make a coroner's fee off of you. <laughs> you mark my words now. Well, I didn't come here to listen to the half baked opinions of some broken down old quack. Right, now, wait a minute. You now, just both wait. of you, wait a minute. Doc, you quit trying to drum up business. Well... What's the job, Burke? These papers ought to explain it pretty well. Oh, let me see them. That's what I've been doing back in Washington. And I don't mind telling you, it gives me a lot of satisfaction when I finally got them to issue them papers. Court ordered a United States Marshal in Dodge City, Kansas, for service of eviction notice. Yeah, look at the second one, Marshal. It took me pretty near three years to get justice done. Eviction order from Federal Lands Commission, Washington, D.C., to one Sloat Carson. Yep. Finally getting them off my back. Guilty of illegal homesteading, a portion of the Krager Ranch located in Section 246 Township. I see. Are uh, you sure that this is justice, Burke? You got the papers right there in your hand, Marshal. It was issued according to law. I was talking about justice, not law. You aiming to separate the two, are you? How much range are you running now, Burke? Just over 30,000 acres. Uh huh. And Sloat Carson's got a measly 360 acres in that homestead. Is it going to break you to let him go on farming it? That's got nothing to do with it. The law's decided the land's mine. It's your job to get him off it. You've been driving yourself for ten years now, Burke, without a let-up. you got every inch of land between Briar Ridge and Walnut Creek, except for this piece that Sloat's living on. And I got it, too, now, once you serve that order. Why? What are you out to prove, Burke? It's what I have proved, Marshal, that I'd own the whole valley someday. Every last foot of it. And with Sloat Carson out, I do own it. I've gone along all these years keeping the old name Blue Sage Valley. But now that I own it complete, I'm changing that name, Marshal. It's the Crager Ranch now. From here on out. Yeah, yeah. From here on out won't be very long if you up and bust a blood vessel. So my son's name Crager, too, I'll remind you. Burke. Well, Sloth's put a lot of work into that place of his. 
You sure you won't think it over? You got them papers, Marshal. It's your duty to serve. All right, I'll serve them. I got no choice. And I bid you all good day. There is a downright mean man, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Well, if he doesn't change his ways, he's going to be a dead one. You may be right, Doc, but not for the reason you think. Hmm? What do you mean? Slow Carson's a peaceful man. But that doesn't mean he'll take to being pushed off that land of his. Hello, this is Marvin Miller with another page from your American Heritage scrapbook. It was a portrait of the French hero Lafayette painted in 1825 that marked the zenith of the artistic career of Samuel Finley Breeze Morse. Yes, the first dots and dashes ever wrought by Morse were blended in oil on a piece of canvas. But lack of funds forced him to abandon his art studies in London, and he accepted America's first professorship of fine arts at the University of New York City. While at the university, he lived in the Tower Garret, And it was there that he experimented with wires and batteries, hoping for an inventive success that would free him financially so he could contribute to the arts of America. Even while conducting his electrical experiments, Morse tried to make his art a paying proposition, but without success. In 1837, he put aside his brushes and constructed the first working model of his telegraph. Symbolically, he used one of his wooden canvas stretchers in the process. His promising career as an artist was sacrificed. Yet he performed perhaps a greater service to mankind in another way. Samuel Morse became one of the world's great inventors. smoke coming out of the chimney, Mr. Dillon. Reckon maybe he ain't the home? Uh, he's probably working out in the barn. Let's ride over there. Huh? It's just a cussed shame. That's what it is. That can't be a help, Chester. Bert Prager don't need this land no more and he needs a second head. Yeah, he's got a devil on his back, Chester. Prager Ranch are the only three words in the world that mean anything to him. Well, it's a mighty poor reason for putting a man off land he's proved well, up. Well, Marshal! Yes, sir. How are you, Slow? Slow. <laughs> Mighty good to see both of you. Yeah, you've been out this way for quite a spell. Ah, man gets caught up in things, Slow. First he knows all his time's been yeah. taken. <laughs> That's a fact, all right. Come on up to the house. I'll set the coffee on. No. How are you making on? Oh, tolerable. The crop wasn't too bad last year. Good. Next year, though. The next year's going to be my best one yet. Oh. That's there North 80, you know. I had to let it lay fallow the last two years for lack of time. But by golly, I got in there last fall, plowed the whole darn thing before the snows hit. Slow so I had to work 18 hours a day to do it. But now it'll be in shape to plant right when the thaws come. Catch the melt off in the spring rains. And gonna Slow, I want a kaffir. Kaffir, Marshal. That's the best feed crop in the world. Been too dang much for seed, maybe, but in the long run, that'll pay out. Here, Marshal. You're almighty serious for some cause or other. Well, there's reason for it, Slope. This isn't just a neighborly call I'm making. Bert Krager just got back from Washington yesterday. That's so... I guess you know what he was doing. Oh, same thing he's been trying to do for three, four years now. Steal my land away from me. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's finally done it. What? Huh? I got an eviction notice with me and an order from the land commission to serve it on you. I don't believe. You're joking, Marshal? I wish I was, Slot. 
I'm sorry. Well, nobody can grab a man's farm away from him. After he's put his sweat and blood, his, his whole heart into it. The order gives him a right of prior occupancy. But he, he never run ahead of stock on this ground when I filed on it. There's nothing I can do about it, Slope. Don't them fellas back there even care about my side of it? Don't they even want to hear my story? And according to the order, they notified you by mail. Oh, I got some kind of papers through the post. I couldn't tell what they was all about. I just figured it was some more of Burke Crager shenanigans, some kind of bluff. It wasn't bluff, Slope. Uh, Mr. Jones? And them two, them papers said come to a hearing in Washington. Now, where did I get the money to go to Washington? I don't know, Slope, but the courts decided. Mr. Dillon... Here comes old Crager's son. What? Crowdy Crager coming here? Now, you just take it easy, Slope. Morning, gentlemen. How are you, Crowdy? Ain't you Crager's done enough? What'd you come here for? Maybe I come to undo some of it, Mr. Carson, if it ain't too late. I'm aiming to undo it myself, Crowdy. I'm figuring to use a gun. Now, wait a minute, Slope. I ain't a man that hunts trouble, Marshal. You know that. You know it as well as anybody. But I ain't letting four years of my life get took from me without putting up a fight. Killing Burke Crager won't change a legal decision, Slope. What did you mean, Crowdy? If it ain't too late. You served that eviction notice yet, Marshal? No, not yet. The law say you got to do it today instead of tomorrow, maybe? No. And I'd like to talk to you, Mr. Carson. Why? I may be able to tell you something that'll save your farm for you. I'll listen to you, Crowdy, but I won't promise nothing. You don't have to. Marshal, I think it'd be better if you wasn't a party to this. Why are you doing this, Crowdy? What's your reason? If you'd lived around my pa your whole life, you wouldn't have to ask. Mr. Carson, could we walk you into the barn? All right. You excuse us, Mark. Well... Looks like there won't be any bloodshed after all, Mr. Jones. I don't know, Chester. I wouldn't count on it. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Joe, honey. Uh-huh. Joe, darling, put down the paper. I've got something important to ask you. Okay. Joe. All right, all right, what? How many savings bonds do we have? What kind of a question is that? A good one. How many? I'm not sure. I'd have to count. And I'm reading the paper. Now, what do you want to know for? Have we got enough to make things comfortable for us? Very comfortable. That's why I buy on a payroll savings plan. A bond a month will give us quite a nest egg for the future. Enough for a college education? Eventually. But who's going to college? Our children, silly. We don't have any yet. Oh? What do you mean, oh? Better buy some more bonds, honey. Daphne, you mean... We've got a new investment. How about that? This afternoon? Well, how come you're still sober? Oh, well, now, that's one distinction I hold, Matt. I mean, I'd be the best doctor in the West, but I'm the soberest. Well, then maybe if you took to drinking a little bit, oh, you could... Oh, You never did give a man credit for anything, did you? <laughs> I guess I'm in a bad mood, Doc. Yeah. Evict Sloat Carson, did you? No, not yet. No? Why not? Well, let's say tomorrow's soon enough, huh? It's too soon if you ask me. Have a beer. Uh, no, thanks. I was just looking around. Have you seen Kitty? Well, she was here a while ago, but she went to bed. Said she had a headache. Oh? She didn't have a headache, though. I know, Kitty. She just wanted to get out of here for one night. 
Well, I can't blame her much. Mm. Girl like Kitty ought to be married, Matt. Settle down, having children. Why don't you talk to her about it, Doc? I will. Yes, sir. By golly, I will. <laughs> you should have studied for the ministry. You know, I thought about that, but uh, the pay's bad. Now, there's a real Christian. Well, I wouldn't talk if I were you, Matt Dillon. But at least I don't go around telling people how to live their lives. Well, though. don't you? You know what I mean. Yeah, I would admit it. You know what you need, Doc? Oh, you is. need some old woman to rail at, a nice fat wife to take it out. Oh, of. no, you don't. You don't turn it on me like you that. You know, there's Widow Liffey. has got that house at the edge of town, you know. I've seen how she stares at you when you drive by. You might do yourself some good there, Doc. Oh, Widow Liffey. Oh, I'm not saying a word. <laughs> I hear she's a good cook, too. Yeah, the only woman cook the railroad ever had. Till they found out she was a woman. Well, right? it took them six months. You gotta admire her for that. Oh, sure, I admire her for that. Well, all right, if you're gonna be stubborn about I'll it. I'll blow my brains out when the day comes that I gotta take a woman that, that crops her hair and wears men's boots and men's hats. All she needs is a beard and a rifle, and she'd make a good buffalo hunter. Female charm sure wasted on you, Doc. <laughs> yeah, hers is. Mr. Dillon. Oh, yeah, what is it, Chester? Well, I, I figured I'd better bring these over to you right away. Judge Bent stopped by the jail and went... Hello, Doc. Yes, yes, sir. What's this about Judge Bent? Uh, well, he left these here papers, and I thought you'd already know about them. Yeah, let me see. U.S. Marshal Matt Dillon, injunction against service of eviction order number... Order in U.S. District Court enjoining one Burke Krieger from attempting to assume possession of land parcel known as Section 246. Plaintiff, Sloat Carson. Yeah, looks like Sloat's kindly outboxed old Krieger, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> yeah, sure does. With young Crowdy's help. Well, Judge Bent says the land commission's only got jurisdiction in case nobody don't take it to court. He says Sloat could keep this dragging on for years. Well, Chester, it looks like we ride out tomorrow and serve papers on Burke Krager instead of Sloat. They'll be trouble, sure. Yeah, they probably will. Chester. Thanks, Burke. Morning, in, sir. Maybe I can rustle up a pot of coffee. Uh, no, don't bother. We're not going to be here long. Well, I'll take a minute. You served them papers on Sloat Carson, did you? No. What? Why not? As a matter of fact, Burke, we're here to serve some papers on you. What's the thunderation you talking Judge about? Judge Bent issued this late yesterday afternoon. You better take a look at it here. What's that old fool doing poking his nose into my business? What's this? It's pretty clear if you read it. I don't have to read it. I know what it is. The only blasted way in the world Carson could have beat me and he stumbled onto it. In case you're interested, Judge Bent handed down a ruling at the same time to prevent me from serving the eviction notice. Then I'll run him off. I'll take a gun to him. I wouldn't advise that you try that, Burke. Marshal... Chester? Good morning. How are you, Crowley? What's the trouble, Pa? Trouble? Ten years, that's the trouble. For ten years, I've fought for this valley, foot by foot. And when I get it right in my hand, the last square inch of it, the Crager Ranch, his fool Sloat Carson blunders onto the one way of blocking me. He didn't blunder onto it. I told him about it. You what? I told him about that loophole in the Land Commission's order. You mentioned it one time, you remember? Are you sneaking, young whelp? Here now, you know what Doc said about you getting mad? I'll have the hide off your back. I'll beat you till you scream to have a bullet put in your head. Burke. Stand back, Marshal. Put down that horse. I'll cut the daylights out of you. You hurt me, Burke. You yellow cur. Uh, uh, Mr. Krieger. Uh, uh. Oh, what's wrong? Here, wait a minute, Crowley. Let me have a look at it. What happened to him? We got to get Doc out here right away. It's no use, Crowley. He's dead. Dead? Doc said it was going to happen like that if he didn't stop losing his temper. But he can't be dead. I I didn't mean for this to happen. It wasn't your fault, Crowley. You were trying to do the right thing. 
It was your father who was doing wrong. I can't even claim that excuse, Marshal. I didn't care what happened to Sloat Carson. I was just trying to hit back at Paul for all the years he bullied me. I don't guess he was easy to live with. But I didn't aim to do this. I just didn't. I, uh... I'll send Doc out when we get back to town and make up his coroner's report. I'll break this ranch up and sell it off every foot of it. I guess we'll be riding, Crowley. Krieger Ranch. I'll blot that name out if it's the last thing I ever do. Come on, Chester. Krieger Ranch. I'll show him how long that name will last. In two years, nobody will ever remember it. Sure don't live long after he's dead. Well, I guess that depends on how a man lived his life, Chester. My wife has a toothache. Your wife has a toothache and you're moaning? Well, she hit me when I complained about her yelling. Well, why didn't she go to a dentist? Outside the United States, dental care is available for dependents at all uniformed services facilities on a space-available basis. No kidding. What about inside the United States? It's available for medical or surgical conditions. Oh, oh, oh. And in an emergency to relieve undue pain and suffering. But how are they on a broken jaw? For more on Medicare, get the pamphlet Dependence Medical Care Program. and directed by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns were composed by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another story of the western frontier of America in the 1870s on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>